Paranormal Dimensions is a regular feature on Mondays on the Paranormal UK radio network. I'm David Young and you're listening to Paranormal Dimensions on the Paranormal UK radio network, the UK's biggest paranormal network. Now today we've got a, another lovely guest for you, she's got a fantastic um, radio presence, I think you'll agree when you hear her. Um, so I'm going to waste no more time because we're I'm actually on to an hour a week show now, you, you may be aware. Um, it's not going to be every two weeks, it's, it's one a week now. So um, anyway, we'll waste no more time. And introduce Alison Dunlop. Hello, Alison. Hello, lovely to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, it's, it's a great pleasure. I mean, uh, we've done a couple of shows before on your on your network, so it's only it's only fair and and wise to have you on this one because uh, you you know the drill and and you've got a lot of experience in um, in the paranormal anyway, haven't you? So, um, I do, yes. I am. Um, well, I'm obviously um, I'm up in Scotland and I run uh, SPI Scotland, Scottish um, uh, Strange Phenomena Investigations <laughs> in Scotland. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it was just. It was always known as SPI. Yeah, it's strange because um, we had, Mal- I had. You probably know that I had Malcolm on a couple of uh, the show before last. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh huh. Yeah, he um, kind of started things off in 1979, mm-hmm. so going back quite a, a way. Yeah, because you, you actually are in Glasgow, aren't you? I mean, now I am. down in Hastings, so you couldn't get much further apart from each other. But <laughs> I know, I know, we really miss Malcolm uh, up here. Uh, he has a great presence and energy um, mm. for, for this kind of stuff, and uh, he, he really... He, he did so well when he was up here and then things when he left went very quiet mm. in Scotland and um, uh, a few years back I managed to find him again on Facebook uh, Facebook's a, a wonderful thing and I'd kind of yeah 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 no I'd kind of moved away from the paranormal stuff and I was doing I was doing my own thing I, I was um uh, I started the the Glasgow University Pagan Society, so I did that. Obviously, I, I had I had gone to uni uh, by that point, and I was doing various other things. Um, and then afterwards, uh, a few things happened um, synchronistically, you might say, and and it kind of brought me kicking and screaming back to the the paranormal subject. And um, I thought, I really really want to do an investigation again, investigations again. And uh, I spoke to Malcolm, um, and with his blessing, he uh, said, why don't you start up SPI again in Scotland? So... Um, that that was basically what I did. He he was still doing SPI stuff down in England in Hastings. Um, he does his um, talks and things like that. But uh, up here it was very very quiet as far as SPI were concerned. I mean, there's there's other things going on. Um, there's other investigation teams and other groups and things like that. But um, I hadn't really found any in Glasgow. Um, so apart from the SSPRs up here as well. Um, Scottish Society for Psychical Research. Uh, so I, I sometimes go to the, their meetings, which isn't very far away from me. Mm. But um, yeah, I, I just I think I just really wanted to do something for myself and uh, start start something off. That's understandable. And, I mean, and also Malcolm was such a lovely guy. I'm sure he gave you all the help mm. you needed. <laughs> yeah, and I think that it was um, you know where I. Um, had started off with paranormal investigations was um, with SPI back in the the 90s and uh, 
you know, I'd done a few investigations with them. And, I, you know, I think I just really wanted to get um, back to that. So, um, and, and by that time, I'd uh, had experience with uh, other groups, uh, starting up other groups and, and organising things and uh, running things, like running the Pagan Society, running events and, and such like. So, um, you know, I had all the... the the sort of skills there to to do that again, and and I wanted it to be in the the paranormal. And of course, uh, this of course at the same time, um, I managed to get into. I uh, managed to. Uh, I was offered to do a radio show uh, with a, a radio um, uh, station in Eastern Bartonshire, and uh, so I started doing EDX files, Eastern Bartonshire uh, radio, and. Uh, that you know that was fine. I did about ten shows with them, and uh, then I decided just to um, do my own podcast, ADX Files. Mm. Uh, so I didn't know how that's how it was. So it was ADX, and now it's ADX, isn't it? Yes, <laughs> it is a little confusing, and I don't seem to be able to change that on the um, on the Facebook. Uh, uh, you know the the URL, and uh, don't seem to be able to change that. But um, yes, it used to be. EDX Files, which was Eastern Bartonshire, uh, and it's now ADX Files, which is Alison and Yeah, that makes sense, doesn't it? It's actually, yeah. some, it's actually got quite a good ring to it. <laughs> yeah, I think and, so. Um, as I say, well, when, uh, when this goes out, the, the, not, it's gonna go, well, you'll be listening to it anyway, but I'm going to be putting links on the page, because I've got a page mm-hmm. that uh, Feral Dimensions, and um, oh. I'll make links and all that to your, to your um, conferences and anything I can find on you. Wonderful. All, all the Wonderful. dirty stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sure there's lots no, there's, as well. <laughs> I'm sure there's nothing. <laughs> there's nothing out there. Um, <laughs> as you say, it, things did kick off a bit a couple of years ago, but we're not going to go into any of that. But so uh, we became quite close. I know we've, we've only yeah. sort of kind of briefly met a few times, a couple of times, definitely. But we've come quite close over uh, because of yeah. certain matters. But uh, we're not going to go course. into them. No. We go to those matters, but um, yeah, it's um, you know, I, I feel as you say though, you mentioned well. there. Yeah, oh, very, very much so. And it, as you say there, you mentioned the conference we met at the twenty sixteen conference, um, okay. and and that's something that. Uh, before that, now the the year before was in Edinburgh. That was our first conference in twenty fifteen, and. Uh, you know that was it's uh, Malcolm, myself, and Ron Halliday, um, who's also another uh, very seasoned investigator, uh, yeah. researcher, uh, author, lecturer uh, in in the paranormal and ufology. And uh, the three of us put our heads together and we decided we were going to do a conference. And we'd been saying this for a, a few years beforehand, and uh, then you know. Uh, we 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 just decided to get on with it and you know come on let's what we're going to do here so um, it, it has been so successful and it, I think it was really what Scotland had been needing and you know uh, and wanted uh, it, it's. You know, Scotland. I think sometimes Scottish speakers get a bit forgotten. Um, uh, you know, it's like we are <laughs> viewed as being a million miles away. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And and a lot of Scottish speakers don't get asked, and as a result, you know, to speak at other conferences, as a result of that, um, you know, you've not maybe got a lot of people who have confidence to speak, um, yeah. especially women. This is, you know, a point that um, I, I do have to uh, feel that I have to raise, um, is that... Um, you know, women have a very quiet voice, especially in, in ufology. Um, but with the Scottish conference, we, we are trying to promote Scottish speakers and more female speakers. It, it's taking time, you know, slowly but surely um, we'll, we'll get there. But um, uh, we've got some great speakers again this year. Yeah. Uh, well, I've yeah. been able to come up once, I know. I, I mean, I'll, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll love to come up again at some point. I'm sure I will. Um, but because um, when Peter Robbins came over, uh, mm-hmm. I'll just, yeah, before, before anything all kicked off. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, we won't go into all that. But uh, yeah, I've, 
you, you know that Peter Robbins uh, was on, on my previous show and uh, he was a brilliant guest also. Um, but uh, I suppose really what we ought to do is really concentrate on you, isn't it, really? Because uh, I understand you, you know a lot about angels and demons in particular. <laughs> Yes, I'm, I'm kind of carving a bit of a niche for myself in the paranormal mm. uh, as far as the... It's something the, that fascinates me because I don't oh, really yeah. know too much about um, the, you, know, you, know, you know the stories and things, but uh, mm. once you speak to somebody that knows quite a bit about... I mean, I, kind of, so people might poo-poo angels and things like that, but the, the more I've heard about things like this, um, you, you hear such a lot about it, um, you know, you think, oh, there's probably something in this. Well, I've had my own experiences with both, um, and and people can you know take out of these stories what what they wish and and, and what what you know what they can. Um, but I've I've certainly uh, had experiences that have been quite um, either quite terrifying or profound in some way um that i I mean i never uh, for many years i i never uh, believed in or was really interested in anything like that and maybe demons just because i I was a a bit of a horror fan but Mm. um you know not particularly into that subject to me it was a very uh, christian thing and i was pagan for many years so i didn't really look at that side of things and uh, it was only really when I uh, started doing Reiki um, that I in meditations I would get um, angels coming to me and uh, I mean obviously in Reiki you're doing healing it's a type of healing Mm. and um, you know you're you're um, you're attuning to the life force energy around us and um, you know these um, beings these energies um, are all part of that and they were you know they were revealing themselves to me uh, in in many ways and then I realized that you know the they they were there to help if I wanted them to help I read a little bit about them Um, I did call upon them on occasions and and they did come to my aid uh so you know i over time began to realize that yeah these these angelic beings are real uh they they are helpful um and they they'll come to your aid if you ask them to uh so and of course I, i'd had my um an earlier experience of a, a demonic nature uh, where I was attacked by an incubus um, and I've told this story many, many times but uh, I'd, I'd woken well, up. you've got to tell it again because we've got Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right then. Um, uh, so I, I had uh, woken up and um, I'd been having a nightmare. Um, I, I went to waken my partner. I was unable to waken him. I turned around um, and um, I turned around to waken him, but then I was I was flipped uh, onto my back, and uh, suddenly there was this uh, male uh, demon uh, on top of me, um, hold, pinning me down and trying to um, trying to cut my neck with his uh, cut my throat with his yeah, uh, yeah. this one long fingernail. And uh, he he said to me, you thought you could get away from me, didn't you? Um, As though that isn't terrifying enough because I couldn't move at all at this point. Um, I could move my eyes, though, and I could see over in the corner this um, uh, old woman, long scraggly hair, long white nighty, giggling into her hand. and, And she obviously thought this was very funny. Later on, when I, I looked into all this stuff, I realised that she is uh, the the old hag, the the nightmare, um, where uh, the the mare, the Mara, where we get the word nightmare from, yeah. and uh, there there's various um, versions of the incubus narrative, if you like, 
there's various characters involved in the narrative. So you've got this male uh, adult demon, female adult demon, the succubus. Uh, you've got the Mara, uh, the old woman, or the hag, because uh, it's sometimes called old, old hag. Um, and you've got this little troll-like uh, impish um, creature um, that sometimes uh, appears on top of people. Um, sometimes it's the demons of a murderous nature, as it seemed to be with me. Sometimes it's of a, a sec- quite often it's of a, a sexual nature, um, which in this case it wasn't. But um, something that I have noticed with incubus attacks is that it quite often happens um, when there's problems in a relationship or when somebody um, has um, psychological problems about relationships. Uh, Now, that's all that I've really observed um, as as far as uh, the... Well, it's not all I've observed, but it's one of one of the things that I've observed. I, I, I've observed that um, uh, things like having uh, a, a, a sort of a dim light on or music playing will uh, keep these experiences from happening, um, or they're quite helpful anyway. Keeping a window closed is, it, it seems to be helpful, um, but I, you know, I don't know the. Demons have and always have had some kind of double function. They tell you something. Everything that happens, every experience that happens to you tells you something. Mm-hmm. And, um, uh, you know, in ancient times, they would have... Um, uh, do you remember Pazuzu in The Exorcist? Yeah. yeah. Um, the demon in The Exorcist. Well, they would keep statues, little statues in houses of... Um, Pazuzu because he he was a demon of the wind and he was so powerful and so frightening to people that uh, he was thought that uh, he would keep away other demons Um, so in that guise he was actually a good luck charm as it were Mm. Um, so it's not unusual for demons to be able to do um, both good and bad Mm. You've got any idea why it would have affected you? Um... Well, I was in quite a troubled relationship at the time. Um, I was quite... Um, uh, I think my my voice, uh, in inverted commas, was, was quite um, suppressed, mm. I would say. And, um, and there was a lot of... Uh, probably more like emotional abuse going on there. Um, now, whether that demon was an actual entity who was drawn to that whether it was causing that to happen Um, there's so many reasons and and I always kept an open mind and I you know it kind of got to the point where I thought it doesn't really matter whether it was an entity or whether it was psychological phenomena The, uh, the fact is that it happened. I perceived it to happen, so it happened. The experience itself was real, um, and maybe there's something that more that I should be looking at yeah. um, in this. And and that was there was lots of different things that have drawn me to want to become an exorcist, um, and and that was that was probably the earliest experience that I'd had hmm. well, when you hear about um, the reptilian thing when it's sort of like interdimensional you, mm. uh, you, you do kind of get into that don't you you think that maybe it's a, some sort of an interdimensional attack of some sort you know? yeah I mean people have uh, said that maybe these things are actually um, of a reptilian nature some people have said that they are jinn uh, as in D J I N N, which um, is is another possibility. Mm. Um, I was going to go somewhere with that, and I can't remember now what. Did I, sorry, did I what it you? was. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's, I'm easily <laughs> easily thrown. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, so um that yeah, no, that was that was my earliest uh experience of a demonic entity. Oh, whatever. Yeah. yeah, it's terrifying because you can't move either. Yeah. You can't fight it off, you can't run away. Um I know where I was going to go with this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, a fortnight later, or maybe it was a week later, um, the the same thing started to happen, but I managed to scream out this time. And um, my partner who had been through the room came in and switched on the light. And that was that, was that uh, came out of it. Um, it could, I mean, it could be that you're just seeing into another dimension because mm. there was this sort of, um, you know, the veil has lifted, as it were. There was this sort of bluish colour, which I, I wonder whether that had anything to do with the third eye opening and the colour that's associated with the third eye mm. is this sort of um, uh, bluish, purplish uh, colour. Oh, right now, mm. I'm sorry, I don't want to throw you off again. You no, no, me? it's okay. I've I, got I, it in my head. What you I'm going might to be say. able to answer this because I've mentioned mm. it before. When I was very, very young, I had a purple mist come into the room and swirl it around the room. I mean, I can actually still remember it. Well, I've, I've mentioned it before in a couple of other programs. Uh, and it swirled around the room, and I was terrified by it. I know you know, I was only, I was probably only two, something like that. And I can remember my father coming in. Uh, and I'm pointing to this purple mist swirling around, and it swirled back out of the room and went. Um, did he see it? He didn't see it, no, just me. Didn't now, I've always wondered mm -hmm. what the hell that purple mist was, but you mentioned in that blue and the purple mist, it kind of brought that back, mm -hmm. back, back you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, uh, well, um, blue was a, a super, it was always associated with the supernatural. Scotland um, so it, it may well be that you know I mean if you were two at the time children famously uh, are able to see mm. uh, other things you know they they, um, they they seem to be able to see into these other dimensions I don't know exactly too, but I know I was in a cot with a side uh -huh. up I can remember standing up in a cot with a side up so I must have been around about yeah. two, so something like that uh huh but, but old yeah, enough so, to so you, not maybe mm -hmm. not speak, but in my own mind know what I'm saying, sort of thing, you know. <laughs> totally. Yeah. I mean, I I I would say because you were so young, you were able to see whatever it was that your father would see, um, and we, unless our brains like had, and we do have this sort of, um, what would you say? It's like a safety catch as it were um, because otherwise there is so much around us we would be quite uh, like overwhelmed by the amount of information yeah. our brains would have to take in um, if we were bombarded with that yeah, all the and, time. And as we get older we kind of lose that um, So yeah. yeah yeah, or or it's just that our brains start to you know develop um the ability to block out certain yeah. uh, things that would overwhelm um, our senses, you know. Um, so, so that's one thing. But I had always been looking at that uh, experience from the point of view of the demonic. Now, 14 years later, I bumped into James Welsh. And he told me about his uh, experiences seeing uh, the UFOs coming up to the millennium, December 1999. And it wasn't until he handed me, train home that night, he handed me um, a photograph. Um, yeah, I think it was an image on his phone, actually, that he had. And... Uh, he said it, it's not it's not real. I, I've done it like I photoshopped in this UFO to show people where I saw it and what it looked like, um, and it was right above my flat yeah. in where I had uh, had that experience in December nineteen ninety nine. 
Um, so, I mean, I can't pinpoint dates, but I do know it was around about December 1999. And, uh, that you know, it was the, the same time that James had seen this UFO above my flat that just imploded. It was just, he said it was like plasma and it just imploded. And I think that that's, I think that that was how he described it. Um, so it made me think, oh, could there be a UFO even stroke alien connection to this? Uh, you know, could it be that some kind of electromagnetic thing in the atmosphere has caused me to hallucinate? Um, it, you know, there's, I'm very open-minded about what it might have been. Um, that's not to say that I don't believe in demons and angels because I very much do. Uh, to make that clear, but for for me, the personal experience, I know that in the scientific community, certainly, or the psychological community, uh, just put it down to sleep paralysis, yeah, which is yeah. fine. And there was well, sleep the paralysis. Answer, isn't it? Yeah. Well, you know, there was sleep paralysis, and and that's absolutely true. What? interests me is why do people see the same thing yeah. is it something to do with the Jungian archetypes which it may be particularly like you know the Mara um, you know is it something like that so I mean there's lots of different arguments lots of different theories uh, to explain away something like the incubus attack but people see the same things yeah. You know, they see these particular, four particular characters uh, in some form or another. Um, that in itself I find quite fascinating. Why would I had never uh, heard of this experience till I had it. I didn't know anyone else who had had it. And afterwards I spoke to my friends and none of them had had it. They they just looked at me like I had the literal horns on my head. In my head, you know, um, they were like, no, no, I don't know what you're talking yeah, about. And, yeah, too far out, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think they just thought I needed some psychiatric help or something. Well, which, you've been on something, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, in fact, um, somebody did say to me, what were you smoking at the time? <laughs> and I said, no, I was completely sober, you know. Uh, I, I hadn't uh, smoked or drank anything. Um so it, it certainly uh, wasn't anything, I hadn't been influenced by anything like that. Mm. Um, so that that was my uh, introduction to the the world of the demonic. Well, I say it was my introduction in, in actual fact. When I was 14, uh, and before this, I used to watch the, the Hammer horror films with my dad when I was a little girl. And uh, I mean, they're quite tame really um, but Christopher Lee is, is uh, oh, fantastic yes, yeah. in them um, and so I was at my grandfather's and he was always going to like second hand book sales and things like that and he said uh, you like horror don't you? I said yeah I do mm -hmm. he said well um, I, I picked this up that you might like it uh, you know at the book sale and he handed me The Exorcist Oh, William God. Peter Blatt is the Exorcist. Um, and he had he had he didn't he hadn't read it himself. Mm. He had no idea what was in it. Yeah, <laughs> he was heavier than hand, horror. <laughs> handing this to his fourteen-year-old granddaughter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it wasn't quite hammer horror. Yeah. <laughs> no, it wasn't quite. It wasn't at all. I mean, I read it. and I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I read it, that many, many years ago. It's, uh, it's a very <laughs> heavy book, yeah. It is, it is. Well, I actually, I actually did enjoy it, and it um, it didn't freak me out that much. Um, but it's a fascinating I just, book, though. It really is. It's, uh, it, it really is, but I did have to chuckle that it was my grandfather that gave me, <laughs> and he, he was none the wiser. And I never ever said to him, "Hey, that that was some book." Mm. Um, so that, I guess, was then my introduction to the demonic. But uh, I, I was in my late, oh, my late twenties when I had that experience. So it, the book did not influence me to have, 
you know, an experience like the Incubus attack. Um, well, you wouldn't want it, would you? It's not something you uh, invite. <laughs> you know? Oh, definitely, definitely not. Um, no. No, you don't want something like that. It is utterly terrifying and you are completely powerless mm. uh, under that, whatever that force is. You're completely powerless. Yeah. Um, had I known about the angels, then I might have uh, asked for their help at that point um, because I have done, as I said earlier on, uh, I have um, invoked the angels to help and they have done um, one occasion was uh, in a hospital and uh, it was the woman in the room next to me she was an old woman she was very very sick um, her family had been called and they were I saw them talking to the doctors outside the room um, and they were very upset and they were taking turns to go in and sit with her um, at, at one point there was nobody out, outside the room and I looked up now her room I should say was diagonally left to my room so um, I looked up and outside her door there was a dark shadow um, and I stopped, I was just like sitting there reading and I looked up and then the shadow began to move. It started to move towards her room. And I thought that, you know, I just got, I mean, it wasn't just that I got the creeps. I really felt there was something quite evil about this dark shadow. Mm. So I um, <laughs> closed my book and I called out to the angels, um, Michael for protection and courage and Raphael for healing um, and asked them to you know protect and guard and heal this old woman and and then I told the shadow that um, this woman was protected and um, uh, basically to do one you know yeah, to, yeah. to leave it alone mm. and uh, at that point it started to move back from the door and disappear the next day the old woman was well enough to be moved into a ward um, she had overnight had some kind of miraculous maybe not recovery but she certainly was she was walking on her you know she was able to walk on her own she was able to walk like from the room into a ward um, and and so I mean I, obviously I don't know the ending to that but mm. uh, I asked a nurse uh, if well first of all I said to the nurse I've got this interest have you ever seen anything in the hospital so I didn't tell her anything about the dark shadow I didn't want them to give me a referral to a psychiatric unit or something <laughs> like that um, and she said, yes, there is something out there. We see it out the corner of her eye. Wow. We see this, this shadow out the corner of her eye just going back and forward. And last week, uh, there was an old man in the ward along to the right. And we heard the screams in the middle of the night. The nurses ran through. Um, he said he was been dragged out the bed by his feet. Um, they got him comfortable again, gave him a cup of tea settled him down and a little while later one of the nurses went into the room She was, her hand was up putting something in a cupboard and she just felt this other hand clamp down on her arm um, and she was out of there very quickly oh, needless to say oh, wow. <laughs> so there was, you know, there had been something in there, whether there's mm. still well I, those I don't think they're now used for uh, for wards. Um, in fact, I think the uh, this was in the western. I think it's actually been demolished now, um, which is I think quite good news, particularly for that ward. Mm. Um, but it, you know that that was a, another uh, um, angelic thing that happened, and it doesn't have to be something like big and major like that. You know, but we we all day to day have things that happen 
that um, cause us to be anxious or worried or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it's an example that the the angels are there to be called upon. And it can just be something like, you know, quite um, like you can't find something that's really important. Uh, you know, and and you can ask for their help with something like that. All the time. Yeah. <laughs> <Where's his things? laughs> well, just ask the angels, and you'll 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 find it. Like two minutes later, you'll find it. <laughs> <laughs> so, would you, would you have classed that as a, like, a mild form of exorcism? That um, obviously it wasn't a major ex- exorcism, was it? But, uh, but would you He's... class it as an exorcism of some sort? Well, you could do. I mean, you could do it. it. Certainly, whatever was after her left her a little backed off, and I mean, of course, in exorcism you um, invoke the angels uh, as well as the saints and and Mary and Jesus. These are all very, very powerful uh, names and energies to uh, take um, the, you know, to exorcise the uh, the evil entity from a person or from a home or whatever so i guess in a way it was like maybe a, a mini exorcism yeah, that's what I, I, don't yeah, yeah uh-huh, I guess so i guess it was i mean i've done another one in my house which i would say was was quite a major exorcism mm-hmm. um i had had uh some work was getting done in the flat and one of the workmen that came in I just, there was something about him that I didn't like as soon as he stepped in the door. Um, And after he had gone, there was still, I still felt like somebody was in my flat. And It's funny how you get that feeling about people, isn't it, sometimes? Yeah, you just... It's it's that sense that you get... There's just a sense, you know, that... uh, um, And as I say afterwards, I realised what it was was probably that he had an attachment with him and it had um, decided to linger about after he left. Mm. Um, Either he had brought more than one in uh, and and left with, you know, one and left one or or he had uh, just left this one. But uh, anyway, there was, afterwards there was this presence um, and it's really unsettling when that happens and I'd never really... I don't think I'd ever really felt it before, but it just is like somebody's in my flat. I can feel them. I can actually, they're, I can feel them. And um, at that night, there was noises in the hallway, um, but there was, you know, nothing to account for them. Um, the next morning, there was like, loud noises in the living room. When I opened the curtains, uh, there was like something slammed. I, there was nothing... There was nothing there that had, you know, had fallen or whatever. Um, And then the kitchen flooded. And at that point, I just turned around in my living room and said, right, that is it. (laughs) You cannot stay here. You cannot attach yourself to me. This is my home and you can just get out Um, in more flowery language than that. Mm. Uh, And nothing happened for about a fortnight and about a fortnight later um i woke up and i felt like i was being attacked it was kind of like the incubus thing um and I, something but it was an invisible force i couldn't see what it was it had both my wrists and i was you know i i was as strong as a because so I would say therefore that it probably was a human you know um spirit if you like um perhaps um but it it had a hold of me and um you know I was shouting a, a few things at it and told it again to leave um and a fortnight again went past and nothing and then there was noises in the walls i woke up one night and the walls were shaking the bed was shaking um and i thought right i really this is it's not it's not getting the hint here 
um, that uh, after all the things that I've said. So I did a major cleansing um, and I guess that major cleansing you would say you could class as an exorcism mm. um, because oh, yes it did it did um, and one thing that happened though was the hailstones on the ceiling uh, it's a noise like that's what it was like it was like a, like millions of hailstones uh, on my living room ceiling and I was looking up and I'm thinking, I'm surely I'm not hallucinating this. Mm -hmm. It's like hailstones on glass or, or pebbles. Pebbles mm -hmm. is probably a better way to describe it, like pebbles on, on glass. Um, and I'm looking at my cats and they, their eyes were just their heads looking up at the ceiling. So I thought, right, it's, they can hear this as well. Um, and... Uh, it stopped after a little while, um, but I did read that after exorcisms, things like that can happen. Um, you know, this and hailstones on the the noise of hailstones on the ceiling uh, was one of the things that I read about afterwards, not before afterwards. Um, at, at the time I was writing my talk for the conference. Uh, for last year it was on possession and exorcism um, but I did need to keep taking breaks from it because the more that I would write something would happen uh, so I had to be kind of careful you think you were drawing something in by, uh... I think oh, obvious, it's kind of like talk of the devil Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, uh, and I think that, that that sometimes can be the case. So I was very focused on what I was doing. Um, and, I, you know, I don't know if, um, I don't know, do they do they want to be heard or do they not? Or is that a warning that you've not to talk about them? I, I really don't know. Um, it, it's difficult to, it's difficult to say. However, this year, um, this year, my, my talk's in something a bit nicer. It's on apparitions of the Virgin Mary. Yeah. Um, so that that's my talk for this year. So it's... Uh, um, so what is your take on that, or that type of thing? Because, uh, um, you know, I, I kind of wonder about some of those apparition things. It's a... Uh, myself, you know, it's a... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I don't quite know how to take them. I don't really know where to go with it. Yeah, you know, I don't quite know how to take some of those apparitions because um, you do get like a lot of, of crowd um, excitement, don't you? Mm. Well, um, you know, one of them, thousands of people witnessed yeah. um, the phenomena, the phenomenon. Sorry, um, I, you know, I don't really know how to take them myself either except that um, if if they are real yes, what which I mean. I'm, I'm going I wonder, to I wonder if it's, some of them are actually staged by uh, I'm not saying the church or, but staged by somebody to make a new story or you know well I mean I've wondered the same myself have, have these appearances been staged for a reason because um, they do well the um was it Fatima? I think what happened um, now it was something to do with Russia, and I can't remember uh, uh, offhand just now. But um, it certainly seemed to um, ease a situation there. Um, I I don't you know I've not started my talk yet, so I don't want to to say too much because no. I've not really made up my mind yet. Uh, what way I'm going to go with the talk um, uh, but I, I get where you're coming from with where, where they staged or is it an actual thing but then you know when when the world is in trouble uh, I think that then um, holier powers can step in and uh, try to help um, and so if it is a real thing then perhaps that is just exactly what 
is happening. Yeah, 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 yeah. Those, that's right. It's um, we're well, talking about that. You're you're actually a deaconess, aren't you? You're, you're I am. The, the Valentinian Gnostic Church, you're not saying it, that right? It is, yeah, the Valentinian Gnostic Church. Um, and I've, got hopefully, to admit, I've, I've never heard of that before. It's, um, we're, well, um, the, there's probably some good reasons for you, for you not having heard um, of that before. Um, uh, Valentinianism has never really been in this country uh, until um, until I guess David Parry uh, who was ordained um, by the Valentinians in Italy um, so it's been more of a European thing um, and, and they're also quite kind of I don't want to say secret because I don't really think that that's the right word to use, but they've um, historically been persecuted um, for their views, the Gnostics, um, uh, as Valentinian was, and as Valentinus was. Um, so I think that's probably the reason why you've not heard much um, about them. Mm. Uh, so, but Gnosticism, uh, not Gnosis is about wisdom. Um, and it's about the, I guess, the the wisdom of uh, the inner messages of um, Christianity. What do the what does the what is the actual um, the actual message of the Bible? You know, what is it symbolic? And you know, what are, what does the uh, symbols what do they represent um, and how can they help us to develop as, as human beings uh, you know I, I guess that that's hmm. probably the simplest um, is, it, is, it, is it a spin off of a, um, like the Catholic religion or, or, or Christianism or, or, or well, we are practicing in the liberal. Excuse Catholic. me, using the toe spin off. I don't, I don't quite know how to. <laughs> no, no, no. It's all right. No, I understand what you're meaning. Um, we are practicing in the liberal Catholic tradition. Um, we Catholicism was not the oldest form of Christianity, um, well, Roman Catholicism rather. Uh, it was actually Roman Catholicism that is this, you know, not the spin-off, but maybe branched the branches mm. sort of went, one went one way, one went the other way. Um, but we are trying to be as close to the original uh, Christianity, um, and I guess it's also quite close to. Uh, Orthodox, you know, Orthodox Christianity yeah. as well. Um, I think I understand what you mean. You're sort of going back to, right back to square one, basically. Is that what you're, you know? Yeah, of, go, I guess go back to square one. See, <laughs> see where it all went wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I, I think, um, you know, the, the teachings of Jesus uh, have quite often got absolutely nothing to do with uh, the various Christian denominations and their mm. their it goes, uh, way, way in, goes even way back beyond Jesus doesn't it it's uh, even back in sort of thousands of years before that um, well the thing is I mean did for example uh, did Jesus ever say that um, homosexuality was wrong I don't think he ever did uh, it's it's not. Uh, it's not anywhere there that he ever said that. So, but but historically, Christianity has had this major issue with yeah. homosexuality. Now that's just one small thing, but it's it's probably quite apt to to mention because it's um it's very much in the news just now. Um, you know, it's it's very much a, a topical uh, subject uh, for discussion. Um. And, you know, 
I I guess that uh, we we're trying to get back to um, that. You know that there is there is nothing. Uh, this faith is is for everyone. There's nothing d- divides us. It's really all comes down to the 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 one thing, the one major thing, which yeah. is love. Yeah. You know, and that's that's what it's that's what it's about. And well, that's you know, the whole problem I think with much much religion. It's uh, well, not it's the interpretation of uh, the religions, isn't it? Uh-huh. Really, really, there can only be one religion at the end of the day. Um, you're just reading it in different ways. Um, unfortunately, it causes lots of problems. With um, that's it. I've said to people, you do imagine that like. There's a big G in the middle that represents God, mm. and we're all—all all the different faiths are all standing around looking at this, um, but we're all seeing it from our own perspective. Mm. But it's the same thing that we're looking at. Yeah, even if you're an atheist, you've got to be in there somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, you can look at God scientifically, and and the science is trying to do that. So, you know, um, that. Why? Why not? You know, science is is as valid as uh, anything else, yeah. and we actually um, the Valentinians and the liberal Catholic uh, churches uh, don't have any issue with science at all. Um, it it's it, it's part of it. Yeah. I mean, I kind of class myself as an atheist. I, in the fact that I didn't believe in a god, but I do believe in an afterlife. So, where does that leave me? Really, I'm not quite. It, it, it leaves me quite confused because. Um, I, I guess I, you may be spiritual rather than religious. Yeah, that's that's kind of how I describe myself. Yeah. Uh huh. Um, a lot of people are like that because um, we we have become quite a secular society, but um, that in itself, I think, has has caused a lot of problems too mm. you know you see a rise for example in um, mental illness and depression and things like that now I'm not I mean I don't have all the answers and this is only a guess but um, it wouldn't surprise me if the um, lack a lack of spirituality um, and a lack of you know focus uh, is uh, unhelpful. Mm. Yeah, to, I, I do know what you're saying. A lot of people you know, just sort of left anything like that way behind. They don't even think about. Um, yeah, well, they're very bogged down in the mundane world, in the material world, um, and if they're very bogged down in that, and they don't think that there's anything else. Yeah. Yeah. All they're interested in is the the next point. Or. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, I mean that would depress me yeah. if I didn't think, you know, if I thought that, you know, this was a and I was in a, a terrible, terrible situation, um, that I, I would be, I would be quite depressed as well. Um, but I, spirituality is a very individual thing, um, and I guess each person has to. Uh, you know, find out what works for them. Mm. Uh, the, the, I, I think the the one good thing about um, the Valentine Gnostic Church is that you are very. How should I put it? Uh, you're you're free to explore spirituality um, and interpret. Uh, if it say it was the Bible, um, the, the the Gnostic Gospels, uh, or or whatever, uh, through your own eyes and what you get out of it personally. Mm. You know, obviously discussion groups and things like that help with. Um, it's not about persuasion though; it's about putting ideas forward and saying, well, you know, what can what can you get out of that. Yeah. Um, so I th- I think that's probably the the best. But, but you know, for me, being brought up as a, a Protestant, where everything is just stripped out of the churches, um, and it's all very much just that are there, 
Um, and there's a reason for that, and that's absolutely fine. But um, I felt that um, what worked for me was um, visual stimuli and uh, ritual um, and, and things like that. These kind of, I don't know, they, they give me something that uh, like Presbyterianism doesn't give me. So that's why I, I've ended up doing that. And it goes very, very much goes hand in hand with um, my pagan beliefs as well. I should also mention that, um, that it doesn't preclude them, you know. Yeah, well, it's like I say, you're going right back to square one, aren't you, kind of thing, because the, 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 the pagan was where it was kind of all started, wasn't it? Um. I guess so, yeah. I guess well, so. I, I'm not an expert in paganism, I must say, but to me it seems like it kind of um, branched out all the religions kind of came from paganism. Um, yeah, well, I mean, pre all these, um, I, I mean, I suppose you, 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 it depends what part of the world you were in, really. Yeah. You know, because uh, in the in the Middle East, you know, you had the uh, the Hebrew faith, the, the Jewish faith, um, I don't think they would originally have been called I don't think they were originally called Jews though um, but uh, I don't think it was originally known as Judaism but um, you certainly had uh, you certainly had that um, in the in the Middle East um, yeah I, I've forgotten where I was going again yeah. <laughs> well, it kind of all started out from the Middle East, didn't it? I mean, if, you, if you read like, like yeah, the, and the David Icke books, if you want to go... Uh, no, I don't really want to go there. No, 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 I don't want to go, I don't want to take you there. I'm just saying, but it does actually go probably right back to the Middle East, uh, where all religions kind of came and, and uh, spread out from there. Uh, uh-huh. And a lot of them kind of went well, their I don't own know. ways and... Do you know, I don't know if you can actually say that, because then you're forgetting about Hinduism. Um, and things like that, and you're forgetting about the, uh, you know, in the Far East, well, no, no, well, fact, Taoism and... Yeah, uh, I mean, we can't get too deep into that now, because we've got a lot of time left. But I know, I know. They do say that um, from the, it, it's kind of started from the Middle East, it all went um, to the Far East and the West and everything from there, but... Um, as I say, we could probably talk for a couple of hours on that, but we haven't got that much time. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I I, I, I would probably say that um, round you know round the world uh, that probably the more shamanic indigenous cultures, which you could call that that I think you would call shaman, um, you would call paganism. Mm. Yeah, it's all very interesting, anyway. Um, mm. I mean, we've got about, oh, we've probably got about a minute, really. I, I, I suppose, really. I'll, what I'll can I say? Of, can I... Yeah, just mention a, a little, give your, your conference. I'll a, give, a, yeah, I was just going to say, I'll give the conference a, a, a quick mention here then. Um, so it's on the 22nd of June. Uh, it's in the Queen Margaret Union in Glasgow, uh, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Tickets are £10. And you can get them from me at spiscotland at gmail.com. We've got Great speaking myself and Malcolm. We're all giving our talks. Um, on Ron's giving a talk on the strange and bizarre. Malcolm, the Cottingley fairies and and hoaxes. Uh, we've got Dennis Doyle, who's been on my show, uh, talking about uh, the Mothman mysteries. Yeah. Mark Anderson talking about uh, haunted Scottish properties. Billy Buchanan talking about UFOs in Bonnybridge, um, and Adam Ardrey, who is going to be talking about Merlin um, from a historical point of view, um, the looking at the possibility of Merlin uh, as being a, uh, or the Arthurian, I think he comes more from the school of thought that the Arthurian legends actually originated in Scotland. Yeah, so. I mean, That's um, what talking I, mean, about. I, I will actually put links on my um, Paranormal Dimensions page, so uh, mm-hmm. if you want to send me any notes on it, or, but I've got a few pictures of the posters and things, but uh, I'm afraid, Alison, we've got to wind it up right there. We're out of time, it's been delightful. I know, it's gone very quickly, hasn't it? Obviously. Yeah, it has, always does. 
it's, it's been fantastic. And thank you so much for coming on. Um, thank you for inviting me. No, yeah, no, it's been a, a great pleasure. Thank you. And uh, maybe you'll have me back on your show again one day. Okay? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. We'll definitely do that. We'll do go, that soon. We'll go back into paganism again. <laughs> yeah, we'll do that soon. I've been having a bit of an extended... Uh, Christmas break <laughs> from my show, um, but I should be back quite soon. As I say, I will put some links on the page anyway. Anyway, I've got to say goodbye, Alison, and thank you very much again. Thank you. Right, thank you. Well, that's it. And what a fantastic guest Alison is. And uh, as you can see, she's a she's a very gifted speaker herself. And uh, you, if you want to have a search, you can find her on the ADX files. Uh, I will put some links on the Paranormal Dimensions page, but. Um, I'm afraid I've got to leave it right there and go. Right, thank you very much for listening, and um, next time. Bye-bye. You've been listening to Paranormal Dimensions. I'm David Young, and this is the Paranormal UK Radio Network. Please tune in again next week. Dimensions is a regular feature on Mondays on the Paranormal UK radio network.